Aloha, everyone. Welcome to our second session in our self care and service practice in the love, peace, and harmony field. So, for those of you today, my name is Laurie, and I am um, by profession a licensed psychologist here in Hawaii. I'm also a master teacher with the Dao Academy, Master Shah's Dao Academy. And um, I really uh, am very interested in supporting people in self-care practices. And so um, if you missed last week's session, you can go back and there is a recording of that. But let's start today's session. And let me show you my screen. Okay. So. Today, I thought that we just review some of the signs of burnout. This is something that we, we want to be mindful for in our self-care so we um, can you know, avoid and be aware of these so we can know that oh, these are the things that we need to think about so, and pay attention to to be able to you know, have, feel more in balance and aligned. And we'll talk about a balanced self-care system, um, just some brief information, and we'll do our practice of the week, which for us is developing our first chakra. And I will tell you more about that and how we can benefit you. So um, in terms of the in terms of the stress or burnout monitoring gauges, all of us can notice these areas and figure out for us what lets us know that we are kind of moving to the end of the spectrum that we need to pay attention to in self-care. And it, I um, divided it up in these categories. One are thoughts, okay? So if you find yourself being a bit more cynical, negative, feeling like, oh, this is so unfair or feeling underappreciated. Um, and it's hard to be positive. Um, these are a sign that you may be under um, some stress and maybe moving down that continuum of burning out. One of the things that um, we also look at is the emotions. So the thoughts are probably associated with emotions. And you might feel this irritability or frustration. Uh, many times you might just say, oh, I don't care about things, this numbness or apathy. Um, you may have a sense of compassion fatigue, especially for those of us who are in lines of work that take care of others, customer service, um, caretakers, uh, you know, teachers, um, counselors, um, and so forth. But even as a parent or, uh, you know, for with your colleagues or coworkers, you might lose that sense of compassion that you may have felt before, you know, and just uh, go numb. You might also have a sense of helplessness or hopelessness. Like, I don't know what to do. I can't help when people share their concerns. It's like, oh, I don't want to hear it. Like, please don't tell me. I'm, I'm just too overwhelmed. Okay. So those are some of the signs that it's hard for us to be in a service mode when we don't feel like we can help. We don't, um, our compassion has uh, fatigued. Um, you might also have these um, symptoms or feeling sadness or depressed anxiety as well. So pay attention to some of your emotions. We don't, again, have to judge them, but we can just recognize them to be aware that, oh, something is up. The third category is on bodily symptoms or sensations. So, you know, we want to pay attention because we don't want to have these physical um, symptoms escalate to something more concerning, right? So if we can catch them right away, we can get the attention it needs and maybe, um, you know, prevent. So this is great for prevention. Um, you might feel, as we mentioned, fatigue, pain, 
Um, and it could be all different kinds of pains, headaches. Um, it could just be body aches, uh, you know, joints, muscles. There's rashes. Um, and I remember when I was in college, you know, I would get my rashes. I would also, now I notice that when my, I'm being too overworked, I get my lips get a little bit um, like um, tingly and like feeling like, oh, some cold sores are coming on. So for me, that's my like, oh, let me check in to see what I'm doing. Because many times we just go, 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 right? Um, the fourth category um, of our gauges that you could think about is some actions or behaviors. So sometimes you might feel like being um, overly confrontational, or if you weren't confrontational before, you tend to, you know, um, speak back or talk back to someone that that's not your usual way. Um, and again, we're not judging it, but sometimes it's just kind of uh, makes us feel like we are kind of uh, under some stress. Or we might avoid, like, you know, we might share or talk to people, but we just want to avoid everyone. Like, oh, let me avoid looking at people at the, at the mall or, you know, at the market. You might also be using um, or feeling like moving into some addictive or kind of numbing behavior, such as overuse of drugs or alcohol, binge watching shows, overeating, sometimes um, video games or, you know, reading things. So you could um, be participating in some actions that could, you you know, you, that you're trying to use as, you know, um, self-soothing. So some of the behaviors may not necessarily be negative and can be helpful. We want it to move to the helpful area. But if you find yourself in this space that you're kind of trying to numb out, um, this may not, you know, that could just be a sign that you can recognize that, okay, let me um, see what I can do to kind of maybe get back into a more balanced and peaceful state. Okay, so just remember that self-care is not selfish. Self-care is to increase the quality of service. Many of us who might be <laughs> um, watching this may know that that is something that, you know, you want to do. You know, I work with a lot of healers or people in the healthcare um, industry that they are, or mothers, family um, caretakers. So they are, we want to serve, right? But when we think to take time off for ourselves, we do not give ourselves permission. So one way that you can maybe motivate or feel okay about taking self-care and time to yourself is that this will help you be a better person. It will help you to do your job, to function in your home, um, to increase the quality of service, as I mentioned. So what is a balanced self-care? So in thinking about a system that you would like for yourself, you want to have just on the soul level, which is for those of you who are spiritually inclined or just, you know, believe in the soul, that you have a soul. It's kind of having a sense of who you are. What's your highest self? What's your life purpose? And really reconnecting to that part. Like, what is my purpose here? A lot of times when you are stressed and on the way to burnout or feeling burnt out, you feel like a lack of purpose. Like, what, what's the purpose of everything? Okay, so we want to kind of get ourselves reminding ourselves, like, what is my purpose? Like for me, because I really, um, you know, I follow the teachings of Dr. Master Shah. He talks about, you know, the purpose of life is to serve. To What is to serve? To serve is to make others happier and healthier, more empowered, more enlightened. So for me, that's my life purpose. You, um, each person has um, the this possibility of finding out what is your life purpose, okay? And the next category is looking at your heart, you know, and this is the emotional space of the heart. And it could be about developing and maintaining positive relationships with yourself. How do you like yourself? How do you treat yourself? How do you love yourself? 
you know? And how do you relate with others? So when we actually can develop a positive relationship with ourselves, it's more, um, we're more likely to be able to form positive relationships with others. On the mind level, we can, or on the mentally, we want to start examining our mindsets, our attitudes, our beliefs, and judgments, because many times these will impact how we feel about ourselves emotionally. It will also impact ourselves on the soul level, the messages um, and what we believe about ourselves. Okay. Um, body, physical level, we want to create a balanced routine for our soul, heart, mind, and body. So if we can carve out time um, within your day or your week for the and to address these areas, and there might be practices that can address all of these. And that is one of the practices I will be introducing today. So before I start, I do want to give you information, and this is what the um, I just talk about the soul, heart, mind, energy, and matter level. Um, I can post some videos later that you can watch that can give you a bit a clue about this, but just really basically um, in sharing about this, we have a warehouse of information and the warehouse can be positive information, if you see down these lines, and negative information, right? We have all kinds of things stored in our RNA, DNA, things that we take in from the environment information that we took in as we were growing up, you know, and being raised, okay? And that is what we would consider the soul level that I talked about, the soul level. And in this theory, the soul leads the heart. So, um, and this is the core of life, not just necessarily the physical heart, but, you know, um, it's like, you know, being open-hearted, big-hearted, generous-hearted, kind-hearted. These are the qualities of the heart I'm talking about, okay? So the information that you take in will affect your heart, you know? Having very negative information might make you your heart closed, not open to receive, or negative um, in a sense. Got a lot of positive information, you might be a very open-hearted, very generous, kind-hearted person, right? It affects you. And that also affects then our consciousness, our mind, what we think about. Are we negative? Are we positive? Um, and so it affects our consciousness. And then it affects our energy, right? Energy is the mover of information. It can help us to go ahead and do things in a positive way, or it can make us feel fatigued and we take no action and we just want to be in bed all the time. Um, and so these are the things that we want to think about where we are, but we don't want to judge it because judgment is going to affect us on all of these levels. So we want to have no judgment, but have compassion for where we are. Okay. Matter on the matter level, that was our physical body. Um, in Master Shah's theory, he's from China. And so he speaks Chinese. So they talk about in the Chinese culture, Shen, Qi, and Jing. But you can also think about it as a soul, heart, mind, making up shen, energy, making up qi, and matter, making up qi, jing, which is like how it uh, manifests for us. Okay. So the practice of the day that we will be using in our love, peace, harmony field of, first of all, connect you to the love, peace, harmony field. And then we'll do this practice um, to make it much more powerful for us, okay? So the first chakra, we call it the soul houses in our um, philosophy and tradition, um, the level where our soul develops. And as it develops, becomes more empowered, more enlightened, it kind of moves up these chakras of the body. So the location of this is in the bottom of our torso. It's a fist size energy center um, that is right between the genital area. And you, it's just like the energy field, okay, that you can imagine. And it's known as an energy pump that will provide all the energy for other chakras or so houses. And it is believed to be um, a key area for healing rejuvenation of the reproductive system, sexual organs, immune system. And so with this, and it's um, 
key for developing our confidence and stability. And it's very helpful for clearing negative messages for relationships. So there's much more information, but this is just a brief summary of this the importance of this chakra. And just to um, allow yourself to feel um, more balanced. So think about, um, oh, welcome. So think about, um, we're going to do a practice. So I want you to just kind of do a short body scan of how you are feeling. And you can close your eyes, breathe in through your nose, and just check in to your body. What it is that you're feeling, as we've spoke about the, uh, you know, your gauges, whether it's your thoughts, your emotions, physical pain, um, and more. And no, uh, we started at about, welcome, Amiman. We started at, at about 12.30, but it will be recorded so you can get the um, other information um, later. But um, welcome, you're just in time for our practice, so perfect. And um, we do have, um, it's also streaming on Facebook. Great. So just, so just take your um, time to just check in. And think about what it is that you are wanting to transform, you know, in terms of self-care. What is it that you want? And although the practice that we'll be doing is focusing on maybe boosting our energy or getting some stability or grounding, um, it can, it leads to support you in any other area in your life that we believe, okay? And so the first so hows, I'm gonna have you just uh, feel your uh, breath. Imagine that you're breathing in light to your first um, so hows, or your chakra. And then exhale and let that light expand throughout your body. And just notice how your body is feeling. Um, for many of our meditations that I do, you can bring it to your first uh, soul house and then expand throughout your body. And I think um, the question that you had, you're the only one here on our Zoom meeting, so thank you for joining. But it is also being uh, shared at the um, on Facebook as well. But you're you're the only one here with me on Zoom, so um, great. You get a chance to ask any questions if you like, and let me know um, how you're doing. We have a couple people on our, uh, our Facebook, so th welcome. Um, so great. And so what we're going to do is there is a sacred sound. So with the basis of this meeting is this is one for self-care and a service practice in the love, peace, harmony field. So if you see behind me, the calligraphies, in Chinese, it is um, on this side, da, I, love, right behind me, this ping on, peace. And then on the other side is right here is it looks different on my Facebook and my, is um, love, peace, and harmony, her shame, harmony. So these are Tao calligraphies that our teacher, Dr. Master Shah, created that um, have a high frequency and vibrational field that can support us to bring in that positive message that we were talking about that can help relieve the negative messages of stress, of, you know, um, maybe some of the emotions that we are um, welcome. I'm so happy to see you uh, that we might be feeling. So, you know, you can allow yourself to, okay, let me just, okay, great. Oh, I'm um, gonna pin myself, okay. So, okay, so uh, thank you for joining. Um, I wasn't sure if you wanted to be on camera, <laughs> But, but I would love your camera with me, but just in case, because um, you we're, we're posting right live on um, 
Facebook. But please um, let me know if you have questions and um, how to pronounce your name. Uh, you can just so the first me. practice that we're doing, and maybe you know, sharing what are some of the things that you're working on in stress in your life and how we can maybe apply um, this to help you. So this first exercise that, um, that we're doing today is for our foundation. And this can help us feel grounded and centered because when we're stressed and we're working and going on through life, we um, may not feel good. So if we do have like some depression symptoms or just some negativity, or we don't feel ourselves like not centered, this is a practice that can kind of help um, us just get grounded again and kind of boost our energy. Okay. And so let me demonstrate it for you. I'm going to stand up so you can maybe, well, you won't be able to see because my camera is too close to myself. But you can either put your hands, if you're sitting down, you can sit on your hands. But basically, I like to um, stand up for this practice if you can, because it kind of brings more energy to our body. And we're going to be standing in alignment. So our feet are um, positioned forward. We're bending our knees slightly. And we are maybe tilting our pelvis a little bit in. So, our, you know, we don't have to stick out our butt. We just have it in alignment, um, our back is straight, and we're gonna imagine that the top of our head, like a cord of light, is going all the way to the heavens, to the universe, and that helps us physically align with our, our chin slightly tucked in, so the back of our neck is flat. And actually, this is our body power, and just doing this can kind of help with your circulation, and you might even though it takes some energy to get into this position, it will generate more energy for you. You'll feel less tired actually. than if you just kind of slouch down at your chair or your desk, just kind of taking in and doing this posture will also help with the physical alignment, but also energetically, okay? So this is the posture that we wanna be in. And then you can put your hands on your lower abdomen, or if you're like sitting down and you, your hands can reach, you know, like you, you can sit on your hands. Some people like that. But our mind power will be, our creative visualization will be on our first so house, okay? So for those of you who um, I'm introducing some power techniques, if you're wanting more, it will be in the description or you can look at our last video um, from last week that's posted, okay? So it's just basically, um, we're gonna imagine breathing in light to that center. And we're gonna imagine that the light, every time we breathe in, we're gonna use a sacred sound. It's H-E-I, hey, like just like a, like hey, you know, calling someone. But in Chinese, it's H-E-I. And it's a sacred sound that also carries a positive frequency and vibration. So we'll just say that and imagine that the light is expanding. And if you are in a place that you can yell or say it aloud, please do so because what can happen is that you can um, uh, you can bring energy there and you can kind of see if it needs more support. Okay, so gonna inhale, personal house. Hey. Again, inhale, you're gonna imagine light coming in like a beautiful ball of light going down the center of your body to your first soul house. And then say, hey. Third time, inhale, imagine the light going and feel this ball of light resonating out. Hey. I'm inhale light. Hey. So we're using our mind power and sound power today. And now I'm gonna just use a few minutes to just meditate quietly on that point and imagining this light growing. I'm gonna play um, a 
a song for a few minutes that you can just relax and meditate and imagine that this part is just expanding. You can just continue along and just go, hey, with the music. Um, and for a service portion, we're going to invite because we believe that all souls can benefit. And for all the souls that you know, you can imagine that they're coming in and um, connecting to this positive message of love, peace, and harmony to bring that message there to kind of boost ourselves in that area. So I'm going to try to play the um, instrumental of love, peace, and harmony. And as you're listening, imagine that the light and the music, the beautiful love, peace, and harmony coming in to that area to ground, center, and balance you, bringing light in, expanding that light. Light expand. I just feel the messages of love, peace, and harmony. You can imagine it coming into that first uh, basis, your root chakra. As you exhale, feel that light expand, especially to the areas that you are feeling stressed. Just a few more minutes to stay in this field. Inhaling. Exhaling. And inhale. Just finishing up our meditation. Again, we're going to inhale the light of the field. We're going to bring it down to our first chakra again. Let that light expand throughout the body, especially in the area that you had um, wanted that support that you might have been feeling stressed or needing some healing or transformation. So we have a couple more minutes. Inhale, light, feel the messages of love, peace and harmony coming in. We bring it to the bottom of our torso, the first so house. And exhale, the light is expanding. And imagine this light, your whole body full of light, releasing your stress, tension, negative information. Again, inhale to our first cell house. Exhale, let that light expand, release. Wonderful. And welcome those who join me. Inhale. And exhale. Now just, we just did a few moments of practice. And for those of you who are kind of getting into it, I recommend that you continue to just stay in the space, even though our session is closing. Um, continue to connect with the message of love, peace, and harmony. Bring it again. We did our first soul house or chakra practice to bring the light there. 
and expand throughout our body. Okay. And at this time, I just want us to express gratitude to ourselves. Um, gratitude is a great brain balancer and also can help in our moods, in our thoughts, our emotions, right? Just to connect with the message of gratitude. So give yourself credit. Give yourself, um, thank yourself for showing up today, no matter when you joined, for staying through for whatever time you did. Um, it's because that is the first step of your self care practice to just show up, just try it, keeping that open heart to do something. And you can thank, we thank the Love Peace Harmony field. We thank all of you who have joined to help support the field. So for those of you who this may be your first time with us, I do have another, the first session, that we just did some basics. I introduced the power techniques and some of the other, uh, uh, you know, um, we did another meditation. So you can feel free to go back on Facebook or our YouTube channel that you can watch the recording. And so we'll be doing this um, week by week. We'll have a new practice um, each week and if you have any feedback for us please do so so we can make this uh you know feel something that you resonate with and can be helpful for you so we're very open to feedback so please make sure to put in some comments or fill out our evaluation form um, that you might be able to read in our description okay so thank you everyone have a wonderful rest of your day aloha bye bye